Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, let's stand up and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in our mouths. Hallelujah. Continually means all the time. All the time. No matter what we see, no matter what we feel, no matter what we hear, we shall praise his holy name. For he is worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I will sing praise. I will lift my voice. I will sing praise. I've made my choice. I will sing praise in all I do. I will sing praise to you. Yeah. 
trust in you. Darkness into glorious. 
Hallelujah. Lift your hands and thank him for the blood. Hallelujah. It's because of that blood and our faith in that blood that we stand tonight with our head up, cleansed, worthy, delivered, free, free from bondage, demon spirits, and all that Satan had us bound with. Father God, we're grateful. Thank you for this service. Thank you for Pastor Nancy, the gift that's in her. Thank you for the great privilege of receiving from her ministry tonight. We honor it highly. We value it. And it's dear to our hearts. It's saved our lives. We thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, the blood has given us this gift, and we thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Pastor Nancy's been in her life for, for a number of years, and I'm telling you what, every year it's just more and more precious to be connected right with our divine supply. Amen. If you're in the ministry and you're looking for, you, 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 you need a divine connection in the ministry. Amen. Somebody to speak into your life. And, uh, and uh, I, I encourage you to consider, if you're looking for somebody, consider this ministry. It's an amazing ministry. Amen. Anyway, I just want to turn right over to her. Pastor, would you come? Obey God. Lift your hands and thank God for what he has tonight. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. we're so awed by the greatness of your plan. We are so awed and we thank you so much that that plan was with us in mind. And we're so grateful for it. We're so grateful we belong to you tonight. And that you belong to us. And we thank you for that. We're grateful. We're grateful. Hallelujah. Just go ahead right where you're at. Lift up your hands and let's worship the Lord together. We worship you, Father. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. You, we magnify you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Well, as Pastor Jay made reference to last night, he was talking about how. No, I believe it was Pastor Debbie this morning made reference that uh, when we, of a healing that had taken place when we were here last time. Uh, of course, many healings took place, but she was referring particularly to one. And she, they reminded me that it was here when God spoke to me about that waves of healing would begin in our services. And he reminded me of something in connection with that, how Ed would minister by the Spirit and he would bless the different sections in the building. And um, Ed said, I can, I can push that anointing back about four to five rows, something like that. But he said, for it to go back further, I have to go back further and do that. And so God reminded me of that that night when he was referring to these healing waves. And he said, these healing waves will go all the way to the back. They'll go all the way to the back. And he said, it won't just be like waves that you see at the ocean to where when a wave comes and you may be standing right there at the edge of the water and that wave comes and then it washes over you and then that wave is gone. He said, these waves 
in my mercy will just keep circling around on different ones, helping them to receive because not everyone knows how to draw on what's in the wave. And he said, uh, it's I so long for them to receive that I'll just, that will just keep working with them and working with them and it'll keep washing over them. And it won't just, it won't just bypass them and keep going. It will stay with them and keep working. And I had never heard him refer to it that way before. But uh, during, as we came in, that, that anointing was in my hand again. Came into my hand for a moment. And so when I, I looked to the Lord, what do you want me to do with it? What is it for? And he said to me, for those healing waves tonight. So before we go any further in the ministering of the word, we want to give a uh, place to the Holy Spirit Amen. to perform yeah. uh, the plan of God for the service. Amen. Amen. Your healing is in his plan. Amen. Your wholeness is in his plan. But your faith is part of it. Amen. And it's receiving of it. Amen. Yes. That we receive of that flow. Yes. We receive of it with our spirits, not just mentally trying to analyze it and reason it. Yes. But we just quiet our minds and with words we say we receive it. And then with our spirits, we open wide Amen. to that flow. Amen. Yes. So I'm just going to do that and you let God do through you and in you, what he going to do. You say, well, what will it work? Well, what do you need it to work? Amen. We could, you know, at many times he has us to just call out specific things, but tonight I was just impressed that he wanted to move with those healing waves tonight. And uh, anybody can step into that and receive of that flow. And even those who are watching, right. you're watching on whatever platform, maybe live stream or later you're watching this on YouTube or whatever platform it's on, uh, it responds to faith. Amen. It doesn't respond to location, it responds to faith. Amen. Amen. So everyone, let's just lift up our hands. As a sign, we, we yield, we yield, we respond, amen. And as I speak to your, your section, hook in. Amen. Father, we thank you for those healing waves that right where they're at, right where they stand. I say for those healing waves to flow, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. I speak to this section, be healed in Jesus' name. Those healing waves do divine work. Hallelujah. I speak to this section, those healing waves flow in Jesus' name. Receive it. Those healing waves flow. In Jesus' name, you receive it. And I speak to those watching by live stream right where you're at. The healing way flows into your home, into the setting where you're at. You just receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give action to that anointing. Start moving that around. Whatever part you say needed that flow, move it. We're not checking to see if it worked. We're giving action to that anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Father. We've had... Uh, of late, we've had, uh, I mean, well, it just keeps increasing and in very dramatic things. Not, not just some, I mean, it's what God's been doing. It's only God can do. Uh, the testimonies we're getting back and we're so, so grateful. We're so, so grateful. Hallelujah. Amen. 
uh, healing power is a flow of the love of God. I said healing power is a flow of the love of God. You say, well, it's his power. Yes, but it's because of his love that his power comes into manifestation. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give action to that. Give action to that. Give action to that. Whatever part needed that flow, that power, give action to that. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, Jesus. Now, everyone, just put your hands down. Everyone, put your hands down. If you say, I can already tell. I can sense the anointing on me. I can tell something is working. Something has changed or is changing. Raise your hand. Let us see. Raise it real high. Raise it real high. You can already tell. Raise it real high from the shoulder. Raise it high. Don't just raise it from the elbow. Raise it from the shoulder. Why? Because I want everybody to turn around. Then look at look around. Look how good Jesus is. Look how good Jesus is. Now, especially look at all the hands in the back. Why? Because it reaches all the way to the back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. We're so grateful. I appreciate that he wanted to begin the ministry time with that because there are people who will receive more now that they're not distracted by their bodies. Amen. Just raise up our hands and worship. Jesus, thank you. You're such a wonderful healer. Such a wonderful healer. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated tonight. Um, turn with me, if you would, to Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. We'll pick up there. We looked at it last night, but we want to look at it again. And I'm going to read out of the Amplified Classic Translation again. Romans 5 verse 17 because if we're to go further in this era, yes. these foundational things must be in place and fortified. Yes. Amen. Amen. If someone were to say, we're going to expand our building, the first place a building contractor goes, he goes to the foundation to yeah. see if, if it's able to support yeah. a further structure. Yes. If it's able to be built higher, if it's able to go wider, they're going to look first at the foundation. Well, for us to go further, we have to, we have to touch into the, these foundational truths and say, are they still in place? Are they fortified or do they need to be fortified? Amen. So here we see in Romans chapter 5, verse 17, the Amplified says, For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, that's talking of Adam, death reigned through that one. What's that mean? Death was, death was dominating. Yeah. Death reigned through that one. Much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace unmerited favor and the free gift, look at that, free gift, free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself that those who receive that free gift as kings in life, not just in heaven. In this life. In this life. They will reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Well, how do we reign in this life? That when circumstances show up, we're, we're, we're dominating. Circum we're not dominated by circumstances. We're dominating circumstances. That's reigning. Amen. And notice that is made possible because of two things. The overflowing grace and the free gift of righteousness. So these things must be continually fortified 
if I could say this, that we are expecting these things yes. to be evident in us. Um, we are not righteous because we've done everything right. This is not a performance-based righteousness. It, we are righteous because Jesus did everything right. And so anytime we miss it, we point to his rightness. <laughs> that puts us back in righteousness by his blood. Once we confess, when we do it wrong, we, we say that his rightness is far greater than our miss. Amen. Um, the Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. The word shows him that, shows that uh, of him. And in giving him that name, we also see his device. Accusations. Accusations. One accusation after another against you and who you are in Christ. That's right. He's got to sway you away from who you are in Christ. So um, these accusations, the accuser of the brethren intends to bring us under a flow of condemnation so that we walk with a sense of sin consciousness. That we're constantly aware of where we've missed it. Yeah. Yeah. Constantly aware of what we've left undone. Yeah. Yeah. Constantly aware of what we haven't done. Constantly aware of what we could have done better. Yeah. How we could have been further along. It's always the woulda, shoulda, coulda. Yeah. 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 Threat that cycles yeah. and just keeps cycling yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the, that's the enemy's intention. Not that it has to do that, but that's his device. Amen. And he constantly points to our faults, failures, weaknesses, sins of the past, flaws. And it's all about pointing to our flesh. Get you naturally minded. Isn't that right? He points to... Your faith should have been further along. You should have done more of this and more of that. It's a constant of how you're falling short in performance. But this is not performance-based righteousness. At least not our performance. It was what Jesus carried out. His righteousness made ours. It's not earned righteousness through our performance. Amen. Amen. And I will say this, condemnation from the devil is mean. It's mean. It paints to you that you are failing God. And when people... When we love God so much, the last thing we want to do is displease Him, fail Him in any way. And there's constant accusation of this is, you're, you're failing God in this, you're failing God in this, you're failing God in this. And He turns you in upon yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, condemnation robs you of your faith. It robs you of hope. Yes. Yes. It robs you of miracles. Yes. Why does it rob you of miracles? Because it robs you of faith. Yes. We can't be bold in faith talking yeah. about what we're not. Right. Where we missed it. And even if we have taught our word of faith lips yeah. not to say yeah. certain things, yeah. Yeah. there is sometimes a cycling yeah. through back here. What we've learned yeah. to yeah. not voice, yeah. but it's a double-mindedness. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. saying faith words, but feeling <laughs> the sense of condemnation yeah. Yeah. that just keeps yeah. trying to yeah. sit on the head. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's an enemy. Uh, condemnation is an enemy of what's in your spirit. Yeah. 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 Because it constantly holds you 
uh, in the place where you're mindful of what's in your flesh and not mindful of what's in your spirit. It, it's an enemy to who you are in Christ. Yeah, it is. It's mean. Because we got born again because we, one of the things, we couldn't live under who we were. Right, right without Christ. Right. We couldn't live under that. Right. Yeah. But condemnation seeks to put you back into that same mindset of talking about who you are apart from Christ and the, the unrenewed mind won't catch it. And they'll just live under this self-loathing, this self-dissatisfaction, self-displeasure. And if they don't turn it in on themselves, they turn it around on those around them because there's a dissatisfaction. They're trying to find out, how do I relieve that? And so they, they'll attack a boss, maybe the job. They'll try to move from city to city, house to house, job to job, spouse to spouse, because they're trying to get, they're trying to satisfy a sense of sin consciousness and trying to find something that seems to fit. Well, it's, it's a renewing of the mind that is called for. Amen. Condemnation points us to who we are in the flesh, but righteousness points us to who we are in Him. Amen. 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 We look a lot better in Him than out of Him. <laughs> we have to remember this our past is gone, cleansed by the the blood of Jesus that they were singing about tonight. The blood makes it as though you never missed it. That's righteousness. Right standing because of the blood. So we are to live as though we never missed it. The only thing is we remember we missed it. And the devil energizes that thought but we have to talk to yeah. those thoughts. Yeah. 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 Amen. We talk about answer it. Yeah. When the devil says something, you better learn to answer thoughts against yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Accusations against you. Yeah. Accusations against those God's put in your life. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Now, um, condemnation sin consciousness, a sense of guilt, mm -hmm. a sense of shame. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There are people who live with a sense of shame and they talk a lot about it yeah. because they're trying to get relief from it by confessing it to others. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's good. That's really Anyone in Christ should not carry a sense of shame. Right. Why? Right. Because we have a Savior. Amen. Yeah. Saving us from the shame yeah. of the past. Yeah. We have a Savior. Yeah. To live under a sense of shame is to forget yeah. the Savior yeah. that you have. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, it draws us, condemnation draws us and entrenches us in the mental arena. And it draws you away from your spirit where faith yeah. resides. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it comes to get you separated from yeah. your faith. Yeah. Yeah. So even though you might have it, you don't use it. Yeah. Right. Because condemnation just slaps you back down yeah. every time you go to be bold. Yeah. Right. Come on. Yeah. Because you go to pray and the devil will remind you right. Right. of yeah. things of the past or things that are very maybe more recent. Um, he knows that if we live under a sense of condemnation, a sense of sin consciousness, that our faith is no longer a threat to him. Not only that, our approach to God is hindered because we can only approach him by faith. We can only have fellowship 
ongoing fellowship with him by faith and condemnation interrupts that fellowship. Every time someone is yielding to condemnation, fellowship with God is interrupted. God doesn't leave, but your, your thoughts are not toward him. It comes to interrupt your mindfulness of the greater one in you. So that you're, you don't have a thriving fellowship, you have a sporadic fellowship based on whether you feel you're under condemnation that strong, that day or not very strong. Conviction, your own spirit will convict you when you do something wrong. But when your spirit convicts you, first of all, you know, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. And you all, and, and with that, sense of conviction is a knowing of how to handle it. If we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. Conviction shows you how to come out of that place of missing it. Condemnation pushes you down and makes you feel as though there is no exit. You are forever like this. It's just, I, I just, I'm struggling to do better. I'm struggling to get better at this and I'm not getting better. I'm not advancing. It takes all of the hope out of you. It pushes you down and just holds you there. Conviction lifts you out of that place. But condemnation pushes you in there and holds you there to where you begin to detest yourself. That's right. Amen. Amen. Uh, condemnation seeks to draw you away from your spirit because in your spirit is every ingredient for victory. In your flesh is every ingredient for failure. <laughs> but in your spirit is every ingredient for victory and success. The life of God. The nature of God. The love of God. The ability of God. The nine fruits of the Spirit. The leading of the Spirit. Amen. Uh, all of these that are in us. Walking in the Spirit is not walking with glazed over eyes. Trying to look like I don't know what you're saying to me because I'm hooked in somewhere else. <laughs> Walking in the Spirit is just being dominated by these forces in you instead of the forces against you. It's walking in the Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Condemnation draws you away from the forces in you because it makes you mindful of the flesh instead of turning toward your own spirit. Uh, condemnation robs us of mastery over the enemy. Jesus has made us his master. He is our subject. Now we have to become masterful as masters. Skillful in it. And every thought of condemnation received uh, undoes our mastery yeah. over yeah. Hi him as our subject. Yeah. Miracles will not work in a condemned heart. Miracles will rob us. Excuse me, condemnation will rob us of miracles. It will rob us of receiving healing power. Right. When we, it will rob us of answers that belong to us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Condemnation doesn't just destroy someone's self-image of how they see themselves. It destroys how their understanding of how God sees them. Now there's the danger. That they don't, they lose, gr they lose a grasp, they lose the light of how God sees them. Um, and we know this, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is, therefore now, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Heaven put a deadline to condemnation on your life now. Now's the deadline. A timeline, a timeline. 
For when condemnation must end, yes. being entertained, being listened to, how you have failed in ministry, your ministry hasn't done this, you should have been further along, says who? Condemnation is a bad life coach. <laughs> Trying to articulate and define what success in God looks like does not flow from condemnation, yet people live under that. Yes. Yes. Amen. A bad self-image is simply this, the invitation to renew your mind further. There should be no bad self-images yeah. in the body of Christ. Amen. 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 It's possible. Yes, amen. 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 It is. It's possible it is possible. if we fortify who we are yes. in Him and we make that where our attention goes yes. and yes. we answer thoughts with that. Right. Now, we looked at it last night, but Isaiah 32, 17 again, let's see it. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 17. And it reads, And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. What's that mean? No struggle. No struggle. Not struggling to become something that I'm made to be. The struggle with self it is answered in these verses that say that we are the righteousness of God. All self-struggles are answered right there. Yeah. Who you are in Him. Yes. Who you are in Christ. Yes. In whom, yes. through whom, by whom. Yes. All of those verses absolutely unravel yes. self-issues, yes. self-image issues. Yes. And if we're going to go further, we have to be skillful at yes. disarming all of those thoughts yes. against our righteousness. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to read to you something E.W. Kenyon wrote. He said, To most of us, what we were before we found Christ so dominates our minds and so rules us that we forget what we are now in Him. Listen to this phrase, We belittle our redemption and we magnify our failures. Come on. Our weakness we let be ever with us. We have forgotten that He is ever in us. If we would, pers here's the cure. If we would persistently fix our thoughts upon what we are in Christ yes. and what Christ is doing for us right now at the right hand of the Father. Yes. It would lift, lift us out of weakness yep. and failure and into His strength. Amen. So, set your minds on things that are above. Amen. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Why? He's working in our behalf right now. Moving in our behalf right now. His present day ministry. So he's telling us this, what we have our minds on will determine how skillful we are at walking in our righteousness. You just can't let your mind yeah. dig and burrow a hole of, I, I, I can't believe I've done this again. I just, I'm the, I, I, the, the, the self-loathing, the self-disappointment. And I'm not talking about treating it light when we miss God, when we sin. We're, we don't, we're not light about that. We're not flippant about that because our sin costs heaven everything. But we have enough confidence in what His Word said about us that we believe it. We believe who He made us to be instead of believing how we feel. 
Ephesians 4, verse 22. I haven't quite yet gotten to where I'm going, but I'll get there. <laughs> Ephesians 4, verse 22 through 24, the King James says this, that you put off concerning the former conversation, or we could say this, the manner of life, of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you, you put on the new man. Which after God is created in righteousness. And true holiness. Put that on. Put that on. How do you put it on? You talk it. You meditate it. You speak it to yourself. You answer anything that's against this with this. The Amplified says, strip yourselves of the former nature. Put off and discard your old unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lusts and desires that spring from delusion. And be, look at this, constantly yes. renewed yes. in the spirit of your mind, mm -hmm. having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new nature, the regenerate self created in God's image. Look at this, godlike in true righteousness. Yes. Yes. You, yes. godlike. Yeah. Yeah. Like God. Yeah. In true righteousness. Yeah. Not earned righteousness. True righteousness came from Him. Yeah. It's not something you performed and worked up to. Yeah. And it's not a righteousness we enter once we enter heaven. That everybody equal in righteousness, yes. but not everyone equally renewed in righteousness. Yes. Yes. There's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. We're all equal in righteousness, yes. but some have renewed them, right. their minds to it more than others. That's right. Nobody you've admired as generals in the body of Christ was ever more righteous than you. That's right. But some were more renewed to their righteousness. And because of that, they bore fruits of righteousness. They bore fruits of righteousness, demonstrating their renewed mind of their righteousness. Hallelujah. Condemnation seeks to rob us of our fellowship with God. I remember several years ago, I was, after Ed's home going, there were many projects that had to be addressed, things that had to be done, and something happened that was really unnecessary, it didn't need to happen, and it just piled a whole nother um, aspect of project on me. And I thought, I was disappointed that that was being laid in addition to everything else for me to have to deal with and resolve. And I was sitting thinking about it as I was putting on my makeup, not offended, but disappointed. Yeah. You know, it, it was just unnecessary. And I'm sitting there putting on my makeup, 15, 30, 30 45 minutes, okay. <laughs> and when you do mindless work, the mind can go in all kinds of other places. And I'm sitting there thinking, putting on, stripping off the old, putting on the new. And I'm thinking of just disappointed about with this. After a bit of going that direction, God said to me, you can think about that if you want to but you'll have to give up fellowship with me to think about it. That's what condemnation is designed to do. You can think about it if you want to, but it comes to put a barrier in between us and fellowship with God. And it's condemnation 
that robs us of being completely, uh, completely turned toward Him. You, you've heard the phrase practicing the presence of God. Yes. With condemnation, it'll rob you of that. Yes. Yes. You've got to get that condemnation. Yes. Yes. Quit yielding to it. Yes. Yes. Because, now go with me to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 7. John chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. What's this talking about, abiding? Yes. Yeah. Abiding, not visiting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Abiding. Yeah. Not just touching in every once in a while. Right. Abiding. Yeah. Occupying. Yes. Couldn't we say that? Occupying. Yes. A certain place and not leaving it. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall what? Ask what you will. Look at this. And it shall be done. The assurance. All uncertainty is removed through the abiding. Through abiding in him and his word abiding in us, everything is certain. There's no risk to faith. There's no wondering if this is going to happen. Why isn't this happening? In the abiding place, there's always the laying hold of. When his words abide in us, our lives produce what those words offer us. So condemnation comes to try to separate you from the fruit of abiding. The fruit of fellowship. Yeah. Because many times people are trying to get pay increases. They're trying to get their finances handled. They're trying to lay hold of healing. They're trying to believe God. They feel frayed. They feel stretched. And all of these things flow easily from the abiding place. And condemnation comes to interrupt the abiding so that all these things that belong to us in Christ are a struggle. And that's one of the primary reasons condemnation comes. It's not just so you feel bad about yourself. It's so you, you draw back from access to the abiding place because that's where the glory acts like a magnet in your life, drawing everything to you, yes. seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things. They're just added. added. They're added. added. You're not struggling to That's earn right. them. You're not struggling yeah. to get them. Yeah. They just show up they because show up. of the place you're flowing from. Amen. 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 Condemnation seeks to get us abiding in us. That's good. Absorbed with us. Fixed on us. Harassed by us. And the more we look at us, the lower we go. The more we look at what we're not, the more we're not. Come on. Wow. And condemnation comes to try to interrupt this abiding. Because Jesus came that we might be one with the Father as He is one. We are one. But we're, when we yield to condemnation, we're not living as one. We're not enjoying the oneness. That is ours. We're not living as rich as He made us. We're struggling to get past us yeah. to reach him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get me out of the way. I'm trying to get... And righteousness got you out of the way. When you say, I'm righteous, boom, I'm there. I'm not struggling to 
peel me off. I'm trying to do better, God. I'm trying to... Condemnation is to keep you completely occupied with you. Where there is no hope. <laughs> with you in view. Righteousness gives us permission to ignore us and be abiding. And when the devil says, you remember how you messed up that marriage? You remember how you messed up that business? Come on. Remember I was made righteous? Yeah. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Everything that puts you down must hear the answer of righteousness out of your mouth. Everything that puts you down, makes you feel low, makes you feel like a failure, makes you feel like you're less than, it must hear righteousness out of your mouth or it will keep troubling you. That's right. That's right. Righteousness is the answer to condemnation. You can't give the wrong answer and have that condemnation stop circling your head. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the devil will just speak word. words are living forces right. they move yeah. Yeah. Right. they move yeah. and the devil will speak a word and he'll accuse you with yeah. something pertinent to you yeah. Yeah. Amen. in the sense you were there when you did it yeah. <laughs> but it's not pertinent to the forgiven you right. the cleansed you yeah. Yeah. But he draws up something of your past or draws up something yeah. that your weakness, your fault, your yeah. flaws, yeah. just things that quirks about you that yeah. you trip up over. Yeah. And he speaks that. He reminds it. And when he says that, he only has to say it once because uh -huh. those words just keep going. Yeah. The words, the same words, uh -huh. he's not having to say it over and over. Yeah. over again. Uh -huh. He just programs it one yes. time into... Yeah into the atmosphere around your thought life. Just like this. And it will keep moving until you stop it. Right. And the only thing that stops condemnation is I'm righteous. You've got to give the right answer. These, this thought that troubles, the thing that won't stop that is you trying to behave yourself. Right. Come on. That's true. I'm going to do better. I'm going to, that's Come not on. the answer to that. That's a demon born thought. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. And if that is there, uh -huh. undealt with, I mean, I don't want to keep hitting you in the head with this sleeve. <laughs> that demon born thought right there, it just keeps going yeah. for days and it tightens in. Yeah. The more. It's not a dress. It just gets tighter. Yeah. You feel that thing just yeah. sitting right. on your head. Yeah. Now go have fellowship with God with that yeah. going on. on. Go ahead. Right. You see? Yeah. It's, right. it's there. Yeah. And you go to talk to God and that thing is yeah. in intruder. Yeah. It's an intruder right. Right. into your yeah. fellowship, yeah. holding you out of the fullness of fellowship. Yeah. I mean, you might get some of it, but there's a fullness, yeah. an untroubled flow. And Jesus isn't going to stop that thought. Yeah. Right. You right. can get in his presence, uh -huh. take time to pray a lot in the spirit. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He's still not stopping that no. thought. Right. Your righteousness yes. Yes. is the answer to that. Amen. Condemnation, sin consciousness. Yes. I'm right with God. Amen. Not because I performed right, Amen. but because Jesus yes. did everything right. right. Amen. Amen. To start every prayer with a repentance uh -huh. is a sign you're in sin yeah. consciousness. That's it. That's right. Or to start most prayers yeah. with, Father, I know I'm not this. I, I know I've missed Come on. Come on. sin consciousness, yeah. Yeah. robbing you of boldness in the presence of your Father. Yeah. Good. And know this, he gets tired of hearing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why? Because that's not what he's made you. Yeah. He wants you to be mindful of who you are when you're with Him Amen. in a place of prayer. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. When we miss it, if we're in sin consciousness, what we will do, our prayer life will back up just a little. We'll draw back. Our faith won't be as bold. When we are righteousness minded and we miss it, we just go full force toward God. There's the difference. How do you know what you're yielding to? Which direction do you take when you've missed it? When you've missed it, which direction do you take? In that Rockwell vision, Pastor Debbie was referring to it this morning. I, did I hear you say Rockwell? Yeah, I did. Is it Rockwell or Rockwell? Because Rockwell. we have people it is that Rockwell. Work at Rockwell. Right? <laughs> oh, so there's an inside joke to this. No, I just messed it up. Oh, you just messed it but up. I'm righteous. <laughs> Sister, I wasn't pointing to it. I was just trying to figure out. I was just trying to figure out if maybe this cassette I've been listening to was old. <laughs> and warped, you know. Okay. Rock wall, because I left the service going, I've been saying it wrong all these years. <laughs> Jesus in manifested form appears to Dad Hagen, takes him to heaven, stands in front of him, talks to him about the healing anointing, puts a tangible healing anointing in his hand. In the course of this conversation, he said to him, you were faithful in the first phase of your ministry. You were unfaithful in the second phase of your ministry. Now, when you're standing in Jesus' presence and hear that face to face, it's going to have an impact on you, right? So, Dad Hagen falls down at, at Jesus' feet, puts his hands on top of Jesus' feet, then puts his head on top of his hands and says, Jesus, forgive me, I'm so sorry. I, I repent. And, and he kept going on. Jesus said, all right, I forgive you. Get up. In other words, he only wants to hear it so long. He doesn't appreciate hearing repentance over and over. He doesn't appreciate that because it's a demonstration that you don't believe his blood was enough for that. So to start, most prayer times with repentance is a sin consciousness. I am not saying, if you missed it, repent. But the moment you miss it, repent and don't bring it up again, not because you're flippant, but because you believe him. Amen. Amen. He did not want to keep hearing it. And he missed a whole phase of his ministry. Oh, disobedient in one whole phase. This wasn't just one moment of doing something wrong. It was a phase of ministry that was completely off course. And things that should have been worked in that phase weren't. Things that could have been worked in that phase weren't because he missed it. And he said, I repent one time. And Jesus said, Oh, I, I, I forgive you, get up. Yeah. Yes. Meaning, yes. it does not impress him to act beaten down. Yes. He doesn't call that holiness. There's a right way to repent. Yes. And I've, I've, I've even done this, and, and we have to learn this. I remember going down the road several years ago, my, maybe 10, 15 years ago, going down the road in the car, and a thought came to me of you, you, you missed God on this. You, you shouldn't have done this. And when I heard that, I go, wow, I didn't realize I missed God on that. But I said, God, I repent for missing you on that. And the moment I did, fear gripped me. Why? Because fear was te- trying to counsel me. And what you cooperate with, it opened the door to it. And then I recognized fear 
got a grip. I said, God, how did that happen? Because he said, you didn't miss it. That was fear telling you you missed it. And you repented for something you weren't guilty of because you, rep wow. you repented in fear, not faith. Oh. And many times people are repenting out of fear that God did not forgive them. And then they're wondering why they're troubled and harassed by torment and fear and anxiety and panic because what you fear comes on you. That's right. right. That's right. Amen. It's a Job thing. Amen. Right. Amen. When you act in line with what fear suggests, then fear gains an entrance, even though it's in the form of a prayer. Condemnation will get you repenting for things you're not guilty of. Because if you already repented, you're not guilty anymore. And the more you repent, you undo your own faith. You back up. You are dismantling your faith in the Word of God. Every time you keep repenting over the same thing when you've already been forgiven, now it's fear, condemnation driving you and counseling you. We have to catch these things so that we live righteous instead of living fearful of missing God. But see, we have such a love for God, we don't want to miss God. And the devil takes that genuine sincerity and, and, and tries to handle it with fear to where you're, you, if you're overly apologetic, you're in condemnation. You're in sin consciousness. That every time you're constantly, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's not, that's not righteousness. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Praise the Lord. What's this mean? Repent once and mean it. And trust that his blood meant it too. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13. We use this many times when we dedicate children to the Lord, and it's appropriate to do that. But let's not leave it with the children's. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 13, and all thy children, we're his children. Yes. All thy children, all, 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 all thy children shall be taught. Taught. What's this? Of the Lord and what the Lord has done. Couldn't we say that? And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. Taught people live in peace yes. right. when they take the teaching. Amen. Yes. Yes. You can't be ignorant and live in peace. Right. You have, to, you have yeah. to come into the place of being yes. taught. Yes. And that, that seat should never be unoccupied by right. you. Right. Verse 14. In righteousness shalt thou be established. How are you going to be established? You've got to be taught. Yes. You've got to be taught. Amen. Yeah. And you have to implement what's taught yeah. So that it shows up in peace. Yes. Yeah. Verse 13, so that great will be your peace. Yes. When you hold to what is taught. Now, if you're going to let go of what's taught you, yeah. you're letting go of peace. Right. Yeah. Verse 14, in righteousness shalt thou be established. Yes. Thou shalt be far. Yes. Yes. Far from well, oppression. That means it shouldn't be dogging you. You lay down at night and you're just, your, mind, your mind's just harassed. You're not far. Come on. You're not far enough into the teaching of righteousness. Yes, yes, yes. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Those who have established in them, in here, I'm right with God. Not because of performance, but because of Jesus' fulfillment of God's plan. I'm righteous. I'm righteous. Worried thoughts need to be answered with, I'm righteous. Because worry is nothing but fear. I'm right with God. 
I'm right with God. And to a lot of people, especially young, young believers, that won't mean much. That, those words won't mean much, but they mean everything to the devil. Yeah. Yeah. And they will begin to write revelation on your heart about what righteousness yeah. yes. has made yours. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Verse 14, in righteousness shalt thou be established. Now look what happens when you're established in righteousness. You'll be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear. Meaning you don't start every prayer with fear. Fear that God's mad at you. Fear God's upset with you. Fear of I, I, I just not what I should be. I just, you know, I don't have the faith I should, I should have. I'm not as far along. That's all fear. That's all fear. And you'll be far from that when you say, you know what, I'm right with God. Not because I prayed enough today. Not because I read my Bible enough. And I'm not dismissing that. Our devotion to God is important. But it's not devotion that won righteousness. It's blood that won it. In righteousness shalt thou be established. And this is the result of you knowing who you are in Christ yes, yes, and conducting your daily life based on this. Yes. You'll be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear. Notice this, fear oppresses. Yes. Yes. You'll be far from oppression. Why? Because you shall not, be, you shall not fear. And you'll be far from terror. For it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together. What? Oppression, fear, terror. They'll surely gather together, but not by me. God's not sending it. God's not dealing with you on, these, on the basis of these things. You know, fear grips you, a panic. Maybe God doesn't want me to. Maybe God's telling me not to do that. God's not, God's not leading you by these things. That's right. See, uh, fear drives. The devil drives. Condemnation drives. But the spirit leads. Driving is something, it gets behind you and it just shoves you. But the spirit leads, he gets out in front of you. And you can follow as close as you want. Yeah, yeah. But he's not going to force you to do something yeah. that he's leading you to. Yeah, right. yeah that's right. Amen. For it shall not come near thee, verse 15, Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Uh -huh. Why? Thy sake, why? When you're taught that you're righteous, yes. these things fall. Yes. 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 And then they won't come back. Amen. That's right. They fall off your life. Yes. When you look back and you say, you know what? I've been living under a cloud of condemnation and sin consciousness and what I'm not and how I've fallen short and how I've messed up my marriage and how I've messed up my business and how I've made such bad financial decisions. If you'll establish it yourselves in righteousness, these things will fall. They'll fall off of you. They fall. I said to God, I mean, I don't know if anybody else is like this. I said, God, I, I, I should be further along in some things, just some things in my own heart that I know. And I said, but see, you, you, start, you start bringing that up in the mental arena and you've given the devil something to energize. You start handling that mentally. Start handling the things of your heart mentally. And you brought him up into Satan's arena. Yeah. Yeah. You leave him between you and God in your spirit. And uh, I said, God, I don't know why I'm not advancing in some of these spiritual things that I know I need to be advancing in. You know what he said? In Christ. Go back to you're in Christ. What was he saying? You've, you've, you've left the establishment. You're, you're not as established as you should be in righteousness. Prayer issues. Why people struggle with their prayer life because they're not established in righteousness as they should be. People who struggle with work, you're not as established. These are not just... When we say faith issues, what about faith in that you are righteous? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. 
good. See, we just think if we can just confess a bunch of faith scriptures, but don't leave out the faith scripture yeah. that we are the righteousness yeah. of Christ in Him. Yeah. Amen. Um, Romans 14, 17, then I'll close with this for tonight. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God, it's not meat and drink, but it is something. It is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. This is of the Holy Ghost. He's the one who imparts righteousness to you, peace to you, joy to you, the fruits of those those fruits of the Spirit. He is the imparter of this. Why? Because this is what He is manifesting in. When we are in the flow of righteousness, peace, and joy, we're in the flow of the kingdom. And the things of the kingdom can start working in our behalf because we're in kingdom flow. There are some flows God cannot manifest in. The worried flow, the fear flow, the doubt flow, the condemnation flow. He cannot manifest because that's not his flow. What is his flow that he can manifest in righteousness? peace, and joy. If we do not establish in us that we are the righteousness of God, forget the peace and joy flow. Because peace and joy are only able to be enjoyed when you understand I'm right. Not because I've done everything right. Not because I've performed, but because He made me right with God. He made me right with God. Look at this. And God is not mad at me no matter how much I screw up. See, that's what righteousness does. You quit treating God as though He's mad at you, and then you draw back. That's good. Pastor Craig was saying in their, in their city, they put up a billboard, and it said, God is not mad at you. That's right. Amen. And he said, we got hate phone calls yeah. from people who did not like it being yeah. announced. They wanted people to yeah. think, yeah. God's mad at you. Yeah. Wow. 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 Condemnation carries a bit of flinching. Yeah. That if they get in a service, they, oh, I don't want the preacher to get in the spirit and start prophesying because I know what I've been doing and I... Well, there needs to be a reverence for those flows. But many times people are afraid of those flows because they think they're not measuring, measuring up. And there had, I, I have been in services when people have made some decisions that took them out of God's best. And I've known that just naturally. And I get in a service, and God will say, call them up. And I'll call them up, and you can see them come up in fear and trepidation. And without fail, God gives me a word that welcomes them back into his best. And it's not a word of embarrassment. It's always a, it's always a word of, there's more for you. There's more for you. But you can see that natural side go, is she going to clean my clock, read my mail, <laughs> burn my post? What's she going to do? Why? Because that's how they approach God. When you missed God, but you just go bold back, you're showing fruits of righteousness. That you're, there's a, some, there's a, a righteousness is established in you. Now this is, and I said this last night, but I want to say it again because it fits into and shows this. When God said to me, and I'll I'll tell off on myself, I'd love to tell off on some of y'all, but that's not righteous. I 
was, there are times, have you ever been like this, when God takes you through seasons of correction? Yes. Yes. And it's not a negative, it's just, he's, he's, he's wanting you to see what needs to be laid aside so that yes. where he's taking you yes. into isn't hindered. Yes, yes. yes Pastor. Yes. That's why he corrects. Yes. It's not because he's mad at you. Right. Amen. It's because he knows if he tries to take you further, these things will yes. hinder your advancement. Yes. So he wants you to deal with them before they're an issue yes. of where you're headed. Yes. Because the devil will use those things yes. to be an undoing if you're not careful. Yes. So he's saying, let's address this now before the devil uses it as his currency yes. against your life. Yes. And so there are seasons of correction, but the reason God does that is because he loves us. Yes, sir. Yes. And I have always, I've appreciated that. But there have been times in those seasons of correction, because it's almost like every time he talks to you, it's like, okay, it's another thing I need to address. And if you're not careful, the devil will take what God talks to you about and tries to trouble you with it. Your spirit will convict you. God will deal with you about something. Your own spirit will convict you. And if you handle it wrong, the devil will take that dealing and correction of God and flip it on you and accuse you with it. Mishandle it. Let me give you one illustration. Stephen, when he was um, maybe about, yeah, he was 15, he got in big time trouble with me. Big time. Yes, I'm going to talk about it. No, I won't give all the details, but he got in big time trouble. I told Steve, I told Ed, I said, the reason he didn't mind doing that, he wasn't afraid of me any longer. He wasn't afraid of you anymore. He thought, I'm all that. We got to take all that back. Because if he were afraid of going against us, he wouldn't have done that. Because that was stupid on wheels. That thing was moving at a clip. <laughs> so I just took matters into my own hands. All right now. All right. And it felt really good. <laughs> felt really good. Really good. Really, really good. You know, you hear these phrases like parents that say, this is, you know, when you discipline your child, it's going to hurt me worse than you. No. I've never had that no. thought in my life. <laughs> I've never had that feeling in my life. I am going to feel great doing this <laughs> because you asked me for it and I'm going to fulfill your request. <laughs> so I, I took care of business. The next six months of his life, every time I'd say, Stephen, come here. And I always just said it like that. <laughs> a little bit of a bite to it. Uh, uh, Why? To keep him safe. Yes. He would come in and his hands would shake and I'd think, yeah, that's what I'm after. Right there. <laughs> Reverence. 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 Because he lost it and it could have cost him and the family a lot. All right. All right. All right. But Grant took advantage of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, because Stephen was 15, Grant would be six. And I said, Grant, go tell your brother I, I want to talk to him. I just said, go tell your brother I want to talk to him. He'd go down to the stairs. And he'd go, Stephen! <laughs> Mother said she wants to talk to you. <laughs> Same words, different spirit. <laughs> right? God will talk to you about things. And a different spirit, a condemnation, will try to repeat it and feed it back to you in a way that pushes you down. So when God talks to you, leave it between you and God. And don't let condemnation get in on it. And you start dogpiling on yourself. Oh, God, I know. I, stop that. All right. Come on. 
I've been in, I've, I've been in leadership not long enough to know that when somebody starts turning in on themselves, it is so difficult to dig them out of the hole so I can even get them to the place where I'm trying to get them. Yes. Don't dig you the hole. Yeah. If I want you in a hole, I'll get you in a hole. <laughs> I don't want you in a hole. That's why I'm talking to you. Right? And if you just sit there and melt in front of me, I got to put you back together before I can even bring the correction. Right? That's the same thing we do with God. We just start melting. Especially in a season of correction, if we're not careful. And the enemy will take things he knows about you that God is dealing with and he will put the wrong slant on it. And he'll take what God's saying to you and try to trouble you with it. Keep it between you and God. It's none of his business. You are none of the devil's business. None of you belongs to him. He didn't pay for you. None of you belongs to him. And when he starts trying to counsel you through condemnation, you tell him, I am none of your business. And even if I am missing God, that's still none of your business. Because I repent of that and get off your territory. Now, if you're not going to repent, you're going to get on his territory and stay there, and then he's going to try to work things against you. But in this season, I just tell off on me, because I know y'all are, y'all are humdingers, but I'm not. And I got to the point to where in those seasons of correction... I would sense the anointing come and I would, oh, what have I done now? And I would start getting almost defensive. Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta start getting my argument ready. Not to argue with God, but so I don't melt. <laughs> Anybody else ever done this? And, and you don't mean to. But it's almost like you're waiting for their shoe to fall. You know one fell and you're waiting for what else did I do wrong? And God said to me one day, I don't appreciate that. That you respond almost in a guarded way, a drawing back. When you sense my presence, you automatically assume that I'm there to do something that is going to have a negative on you. And he said to me, when have I ever not been good to you? And I said, never. You've never not been good. You've always been good. And he said, so I don't, res- I don't, I don't appreciate a response that accuses me of anything but good. And then he said, you're doing exactly what Adam and Eve did. And then he said, after they sinned and I came down to have fellowship, I knew they sinned and I still came for fellowship. Brother Copeland said this the other day and it just astounded me because I hadn't thought about it. He said he came to give them a chance to repent. And they didn't. They didn't. And he said things for them would have been different if they'd have just repented. But they didn't. And he came for fellowship. He knew they'd missed it. He knew they sinned. And it says, and when they heard him coming for that time of fellowship, they hid. And God said to me, when did I ever do anything to them that warranted them hiding from me? And I said, never. He said, no, and they hid from me because they're accusing me in hiding of mishandling them, doing something. And he said, they weren't hiding because I had done anything to them. They were hiding because of who they've been listening to. When we draw back, it's because we've been listening to condemnation. It's not because we've been listening to God. It's what we've been letting cycle through our thought life and our attention. And we draw back when the presence of God, instead of running to it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Wow. Praise God. 
anyway. Like I said, I know you're a humdinger, but I'm not. You don't intend to do that, but that's, be, that's taking the counsel of condemnation and it's training you to respond to God in a certain way. Fellowship with, your con with condemnation, fellowship with your past will undo every bit of fellowship with God. It'll rob you. Not only that, it'll rob you of the miracles you need because you go to receive a miracle and something will come up to remind you and you wow. will not be bold yeah. to lay hold. Yeah. You'll draw back. Yeah. And many times people are just saying, I, Pastor, I need you to pray for me. There's a spirit of fear. And really, yeah. yes, there may be fear, but it got in because people were not established in yeah. righteousness. Yeah. If we would keep establishing yeah. for the rest of our life yeah. that righteousness and practice running to God every time we miss it. Pastors know this, when people miss God and they make wrong decisions in their lives and they're embarrassed, they won't show up in church for weeks yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because that's how they're handling God. You know they're doing that in their own life. Yeah. They're handling God that way. They're drawing back. I've done it. You ever, have you ever done it? Yeah, disappointed in yourself. That's condemnation. That's right. That's condemnation. It is an act of faith to answer, I am righteous, when you don't feel righteous. First John 1 9, if we confess our sin. We're not confessing it because he didn't know about it. Come on. Come on. We're confessing it so we can answer yes. that condemnation that yes. comes yes. with sin. Yes. Yes. Wow. Amen. Praise Amen. God. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from what? All, All unrighteousness. Yes. Yes. Condemnation is unrighteous. Yes. Yes. Guilt. Shame is unrighteous. It's not an act of, right, of righteousness. It's not a flow of righteousness. But the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. We know we're establishing ourselves in the righteousness that is ours by measuring our peace and joy levels. Some people have tried to display joy <laughs> and work it up when if they would just establish righteousness the joy would spring up and sometimes people think I'm in joy I'm in joy because they <laughs> worked it up in the service and they go home and they're tormented <laughs> because they didn't deal with the root of it, which is a sense of unrighteousness, condemnation, sin consciousness. Establish yourself in righteousness and you won't have to fight to have the, the, flow of, the flows of peace and joy. They will spring up because I'm righteous. Are you helped tonight? Stand with me to your feet. Jesus, we're so grateful. <laughs> we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not in my performance. Now, don't misunderstand me. Because we're righteous, there should be an outflow of fruits that come called fruits of righteousness. Because we're right with God, we can go to God boldly and lay hold of things for other people, for our lives, and all that came out of because we were established in our righteousness. Hallelujah. These things have to be in place for full potential power. Full potential power of the fivefold offices to flow, of the gift ministries to flow, the, gift, the gifts of the Spirit to flow. All of these things have to be established. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.
all of these things that try to trouble the thought life, worry and fear and yeah. bad self-image and struggle and all this can be fixed with establishing one thing. Righteous. Hallelujah. And you go, I don't understand that. Just keep talking it. Amen. Revelation will come. Amen. Of what that all is connected to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We're not trying to be righteous. <laughs> we are. We are right now. Right now. And let me just say this for anyone who you're in here or you're watching and listening to this service at, a, at another time. Um, any condemnation, you don't have to work your way from out from under it. I don't care how long you've been buried by a sense of shame and guilt, regret of the past. You do not have to work your way out from under that over time. That's right. There is therefore now no, no condemnation. You choose right now, I'm done. I'm done with that flow. I'm done with letting those thoughts sit on my head. They're done. They're done. I am right with him. I am right with him. I am, I am right with him. And because of that, all the things I do become pleasing to him. Amen. I please him when I walk as one who's righteous. Not when I try to get all the other stuff off of me so that I can feel like I'm righteous. No, I'm done with all that. You are free to have abide in, to abide in him. You are free to abide in him. And him his words abiding you. And what I mean, mindful of him. Yes. Ongoing conversation with him with no shame, no sense of guilt, none of it, none of it. All of that ends now, 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 now. Because condemnation's primary purpose for coming is to get you with interrupted fellowship with God. Because then everything of the flow of your life is affected by interrupted fellowship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, don't... Oh, I know all that, Pastor. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you may know something, but are you enjoying it? Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. If we're not enjoying it, yeah. There's some reestablishing yeah, right. that needs to happen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Pastor Nancy, do you mean depression and suicidal thoughts and all of that can be dealt with that easily? Just that easily. Just that easily. Who wouldn't get down on themselves looking at themselves? Come on. Because we're righteous, he's given us a better place to look. Amen. And not only a better place to look, a better place to occupy. Amen. Hallelujah. good to be clean. Yeah. It's so good to be clean. Yeah. By the blood. Ah. By the blood. Yeah. By the blood. Yeah. Now, now, if you don't want to live under a sense of condemnation, you can't put it on someone else. You cannot strategically remind people of where they missed it, how they've done you wrong. If you don't want to reap it, don't sow it. Amen. Why? 
righteousness is not just for us, yeah. me. It's for all those in my family. I have, for this, I'm not. I'm not going to remind you or start breathing hard when I see you. Or <laughs> no, you're free. You're free. I don't hold anything against you. God doesn't hold anything against me. I don't hold anything against anybody else. You say, Pastor Nancy, they haven't repented yet. Yeah, but you don't want to be part of any flow of condemnation. You get free from your side. Your part. I don't participate with it. Amen. Dad Hagen used to say it's when you get thrilled with the word that it works for you. I'm thrilled that I am righteous. The struggle is gone. The struggle. Not struggling anymore against myself. No, nope, I'm in him. I'm in him. I'm in him. And in him, there's no struggle. Come up here and do that for us. Come here. <laughs> Something, don't, don't, don't. No, I'm not preaching this as doctrine or anything. <laughs> but our life is hid. Yeah. It's in Christ. Yeah. And I heard one person saying that they had an experience where they were walking up toward heaven, heaven's gates, and then they realized, wait a minute, something odd is happening. And they realized when they, it was Jesus walking and they were in him walking. Yeah. Wow. That physically they were, they yeah. thought they were walking. They don't on him. What? What? Wait, he's walking, and I'm in him walking. Our life is hid. We are in him. When he walks, I walk. When I walk, he walks. I'm in him. I'm in him. I'm not in me. Condemnation puts you in you. I'm in him. I'm in him. I'm in him. People think financial problems trouble their life. Nothing troubles your life more than thinking wrong about you. Nothing troubles a life more than condemnation and guilt and shame. No finances trouble like that. And all of that is answered in Christ. I'm in him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. I'm going to sit down. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Freedom, 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 freedom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, when you, am I on? When you realize that you're in him yeah. and that the blood put it as though you've never missed it, yeah. how bold would you be if you knew you had never missed it? How bold would you be to believe for miracles, to lay hands on the sick? How bold would you be to minister that Power if you knew you had never missed it. That's where the blood puts us, as though we never missed it. And God intends that we demonstrate that cleanness everywhere we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thy sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Having therefore, brethren, boldness. Boldness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every dime you spent to get here is worth tonight. <laughs> tonight. Hallelujah. I was sitting there thinking of the uh, prodigal son. You know, he, he messed up and he came and he had his speech prepared. Father, I've sinned. No more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. He practiced it on the pigs. The pigs said oink. And he said, he got home and he started in on his speech and his father cut him off. 
He wouldn't let him finish that part. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. He cut him off. He, 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 wouldn't let, he wasn't letting him go there. And his father forgave him, you know, made the fatted calf and all that. And his son, one thing the younger son had going for him, he knew how to receive. He knew how to accept the forgiveness of his father and hold his head up and march into the party and receive all that he had lost. Receive all that he had lost. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, glory be. Hallelujah. How about we have sermon number two now? Come we'll turn over to Pat. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah.